three, two, one. Gotta run to the big bite. It's a big life. <laughs> Slide in, buckle up, ready, set, go. <laughs> Click, clack on the track, don't let go. <laughs> Arms and legs inside the ride at all times. Here comes the drop. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. Zoom, zoom, live fast, big mood. <laughs> big plans and a bigger attitude. <laughs> Life short, so you gotta live it up within the limit. Cause it's just a visit. If you blink, you miss it. Listen. Okay. Zoom, zoom, live fast, big mood. <laughs> big plans and a bigger attitude. <laughs> Life short, so you gotta live it up within the limit. Cause it's just a visit. If you blink, you miss it. Listen. Five, four, three, two, one. Gotta run to the big bite. It's a big life. Okay, guys, we are back with Jackson Kelly on the Lone Star Play podcast. He's been telling us about his incredible journey of uh, moving to California, becoming an actor, and really, you're already getting work, man. That is the <laughs> truth. I've watched lots of commercials that you're in. You've got some other stuff that's coming up. I do want to talk about that, too, whatever you're allowed to you know, discuss. Uh, sure. But let's, let's jump into a little bit about commercials, because that's really sort of been your bread and butter, and you get it. And that's typical of a lot of actors, I think, too, when they get into this industry, they, they do commercials. You always hear that. Um, we, we already played one of your 7-Eleven commercials that you did, which was great. Great song in that, too, by the way. Um, just take us through, like, you know, let's use that as an example of getting, you know, auditioning, getting the gig, and then, like, doing the shoot. What's that like? Sure. So, basically, um, my agent will get a breakdown from um, a casting director, and the casting director will say, like, hey, we're looking for these sorts of kids. Do you have anybody? And then my agent will say, well, hey, I've got this kid, Jackson Kelly, you might want to see. And then they take a look at you know my headshots, my resume, and they say, okay, I think he could work. Let's um, give him an audition and, and see what he comes back with. So then my agent sends me the breakdown, the audition, and it'll, it'll have everything laid out. They'll say, okay, we want a video of you. So for the 7-Eleven one, they had me dance to a song, and then they had me like... <laughs> They had me like uh, do some sort of like I had to like talk talk about something or it really really for commercials it's a lot about just the your overall vibe like it's not so much like your nitty gritty acting chops it's more of just like you, you know your look and just like just the energy you bring and, and that sort of thing so the auditions are always really relaxed and fun and oh wow. Um, because of covid they're all on self tape so i'm i'm in my apartment with my little video camera just sort of uh you know <laughs> like this one was, I was dancing to like some club song and you know i'm just <laughs> like you just got to go into it and, like ha remove that embarrassment from your brain and just go crazy <laughs> and then um you know you send the self tape in and if they like it they'll call you back for a callback audition with the uh, producers and the directors and for that one, they had us do different stuff. Like in the in the commercial, I'm pl we're playing like a sort of chess game with pepperonis on a pizza. And we're like, so that's what we had to do. Oh just yeah, like, yeah, that's what like, that. That's mm, what that was. Like like, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, where am I? I didn't move realize this it was chess or yeah, checker. Sort of like I didn't. That. Okay, that makes sense now. I get it. I get what's <laughs> happening now. No, no, yeah. that was cool. Okay. okay. Um, and so we were. I was like pretending to play this chess game. Because they've got the whole thing playing down their head. They know what they're looking for. And so they're just trying to test the waters with different kids, see what they like. And, you know, I was lucky enough that they they liked uh, or saw something in me. And um, they, you know, I, what I love about it is they always assemble a really fun cast of people. And so every commercial I'm showing up and I'm meeting really great new fun people. And um so yeah, that's kind of how how it went. Is just you know you get you send in the tape, you have the callback, and then they they book you for the job. And then that's bam. How, like how long a shoot is it? Just a day or two for the, something like yeah, that. Normally, the standard is just like two day two day shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah two day shoot. Right on. Any mm -hmm. any like anybody in any commercials or any jobs you've worked with that you've I don't know met any heroes or actors or somebody that you like have always wanted to meet or anything like that. Oh, I got to meet, I got to work with the director who made, um, who made the Now You See Me movies and Clash of the Titans. Oh, shit. I worked shit. with him on, uh, on wow. the T-Mobile commercial. That, What's his name? It, What's that guy's name? Um, Louis, Louis something. Oh, I'm blanking on his last name. Oh, That's actually man. embarrassing. It's not Letier. Uh, it's not Letier, is it? No. Possibly. Is it, I, I, is I'm it not French? Sure. Yes. Yeah. The French guy, French guy. That's it. Louis yeah, Letier. Yeah, yeah. That's his name. So that's his it's name. crazy because these commercials, they, they're, they're getting these big time directors to make them. And it's great for them. Cause you know, it's, it's easy, fun work, you know, three days, but these are like, these commercials are like multi-million dollar productions. Oh, and it's wow. just like the amount of stuff that goes, that goes into like a 22nd ad you see on TV. It's, 
millions of, of dollars and like hundreds of jobs. And it's just like, wow. it's crazy. Just the infrastructure behind these commercials that like people have no idea, like really with just like what goes into them. No, that's insane. I, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, they're just getting more and more bigger budgeted than it used to oh. be just Super Bowl commercials would do that. Right. And yeah. then now it's just become sort of year round where, yeah, no, that is, that is, um, they're, is that the yeah, biggest commercial like budget wise you've worked on? Was that one? The T-Mobile? Yeah, one? it was the T-Mobile the because that was the release. Which is hilarious, by I... the way. That's such a great commercial. Dude. It really is. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a fun one. Snake. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was the release of the iPhone 13 um, yeah. and they were partnering with T-Mobile. And so, you know, those are big brands that um, they're, that they really want to, they want to push out that release. And so that's sort of a, a, a high level commercial and you're right they want to they don't they want to have these they make it a huge big uh production of it so um yeah it's a crazy industry <laughs> <laughs> definitely it really is uh but i love yeah. it all the same right like yeah, yeah. The, the, we get we get the entertainment from it which is all we want uh, at the end of the day yeah. i mean you're a fan uh first right of film and tv and music and those things totally. right as well consumer as well so Time for a segment called Reheat, where we look back at a past episode that we think you might enjoy. This week, we want to tell you about Norman Buckley. We just released an episode last week with him talking about Sweet Magnolias and his episode that he directed of NCIS Hawaii. But we also interviewed Norman Buckley after the first season of Sweet Magnolias. It's a phenomenal interview that really breaks down his history of getting into the industry, uh, editing, directing, writing, how it all happened. It's a great story about Norman Buckley. And um, please, we'll put a link in the description. Check out that video. Hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, let's get back to the episode with Jackson Kelly. Hope you're enjoying it. Back to the show. Whatever you think you know about Six Flags Fight Fest, about the fear, you can forget. Now that the fear is back, you'll see what it really means to be afraid. Can you feel it? The fear is calling. Um, look, Jackson, what I want to do is um, talk a little bit about wh whatever you can discuss about your upcoming projects that you have um, coming out. I know you're working on some Disney stuff potentially, right? Yeah. So um, I've got a couple projects coming out this year. One is um, there's a show on Disney Plus coming out, Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion. I make a uh, little co-star appearance. I'm in uh, one scene. I uh, So yeah, I'm in episode, I think. 15 of, the, of that first series uh i can't say like what's going on but uh, sure yeah i'm in that and what, then, what kind um, of show is that what just so we know i, I don't even so know. yeah disney's disney's something doing really something really interesting is um they're basically it's their first show that they're crossing between disney channel and disney plus so it's uh it's like it's it's disney channel but it's not it's not a, there's no laugh track. It's not multi-cam. It's single cam. It's like a superhero um, story. Superhero. Okay. And superhero um, story. It's, got it. it's got a full um, Latin influence. Um, it's Ay, like these like Sanda. lucha, All right. lucha doors. Yeah. yeah. It's no, it's really cool. It's a uh, super progressive show. I think it's going to, I think it's going to knock it out of the park and I can't wait for everyone to see it. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's fantastic. Okay, so you got that yeah. one, and I know you were starting to talk about another one. I interrupted you. I oh, apologize. yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, the thing about Pam, that is a NBC crime drama based off of a, a true crime podcast. And um, that one is another thing. I'm just in an episode briefly, but uh, that's going to be on NBC streaming on Peacock. I'm in episode five of that. Um, so you can keep your eye out for that. Um, and uh, and then also coming up um, next week, I'm shooting um, a Western movie with uh, Neil McDonough. And so that'll be coming out later this year. Hell yeah, man. And, uh, oh. Yeah, make make a brief cameo in a movie called We Have a Ghost on Netflix, which will be coming out, I think, in October of this year. So right on. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's that's a ways out. Yeah. Um, no, that's awesome, man. Look at that. You got a full slate of stuff already coming out and I'm assuming you're going to be working throughout the year for stuff for 2023, right? Like exactly. 
that's awesome, man. I, I can't tell you like just how amazing it is that you're following your dream. You're sticking with it. You you didn't give up. You had a, this vision and you stuck behind it. You seem like you got your head on your shoulders, man, um, oh, at such that. a young age, which is uh, honestly quite respectable and amazing, man, to be honest with you, because when I was your age, I was I didn't know what was going on with life or the world or <laughs> up or down or nothing. Um, so, yeah, man, you really got yourself together and that's that's awesome what what is your ultimate goal with this or do you have one uh, like do you want to just like i want to be the biggest star in the world or i want to direct or i want to i don't know what's your big goal no actually my ultimate goal is to be a dad that is um wow like that's, what yeah <laughs> i know that's that's so corny as hell no but it's not goal, corny what a great answer um, man i want to be a dad and uh that's like i feel like my true life purpose is just uh yeah, to, to be a dad. And if I can, uh, you know, provide for a family and, and support a kid through acting work, that's great. But uh, that's that's the main goal. <laughs> I love that answer, man. Wow. What a great answer. Really? I mean, that that's a that's a great answer. You know, it's funny. When I was your age, I remember wanting to be a rock star. So I was in a band for years and toured around. And I thought, oh, yeah, this is what I wanted to. You know, I want to be famous. I want to rock, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And as I got older, I realized, you know what? I don't give a fuck about that. I really just want to do what I love and get paid for. Yeah. It. Right? Like it's okay. that that that's simple at my age. That's what I that's the conclusion I've come to. It's just do what I love and someone gives me money for it. And I'm cool with that. I, I just want to do what I love to do, not be mm -hmm. stuck doing something I don't. So that seems like that's sort of your attitude. And I gotta say, man. I really, I, I've every answer you give, I, I gain more respect for you, dude. So, like, yeah, oh, man. Much well, it seems like that's you. what you're doing, you know, cooking good food and talking to interesting people and <laughs> making it happen. So that's that's great. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's that's what we're trying to do here. Well, listen, Jack, is there anything else you want to tell uh, the folks? Hey, I know. Tell them how they can stay in contact with you online. Oh, actually, so I'm kind of um, like a weird gen z i have zero social media <laughs> but um, really uh, dude yeah. i love you more already oh my god <laughs> yeah no instagram no twitter no facebook no wow. snapchat no tiktok nothing um i can love I'm that, a ghost really. <laughs> dude i can't tell I'm you guys, you're I've the first person i ever heard say that I've got an email, but um, that's it. <laughs> I've got an email, he says. I got <laughs> I got a P.O. box, y'all, in yeah, Waco. You can, you can write me letters. <laughs> <laughs> we can be pen pals. We can be pen pals. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm all about it. No, man, that's <laughs> wow. That's cool. Well, listen, guys, the way you stay up with Jackson is just stay tuned to the tube and watching and looking for his face uh, around. Sure. Um, that's awesome, man. Wow. Well, much props, much respect to you, man. I wish you the best there in New York City um, and any projects you got coming up, man. So, yeah, this has been so much fun, man. I hope you had a good time on the show today. Hey, yeah. Thanks for having me on, Patrick. I like I am so glad we made this happen. I'm now a huge fan of Lone Star Podcast. I love the one you did with uh, Sean Baker that. Yeah, he's, like, he's one of he's one of my favorite directors of all time. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you got Sean Baker on here. This is crazy. This is so cool. He was so a cool big guy, fan of you guys. Um, keep doing what you're doing, and hopefully, I can come back one day. Oh, absolutely, man! Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much for that, Jackson. I really do appreciate that, mm -hmm. man. Well, listen, guys, this has been a great episode on the Lone Star Play with Jackson Kelly. I hope you've been inspired. I have. Um, so get out there and watch us stuff, y'all. I, I love that a lot of your stuff is funny too. You got a real good, uh, like. Uh, uh timing co comedic timing that that's what i wanted to say yeah oh, you really thanks, do. you, you got you. it down so yeah man great show on next week's episode of the lone star play podcast we interview members of the lucio family and director sabrina von tossel she's been on before to discuss her film the state of texas versus melissa of course if you've been following the case of melissa lucio you'll understand why we did that interview. So be prepared. It's intense. Uh, it's emotional. And it's very visceral, but well worth it. It's an important cause that we're supporting. And we encourage you to look into Melissa Lucio's case. And it's a very important episode. So be on the lookout next week for that interview. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.